about the way with the OpenStack Foundation and the Mataka Design Series Conversation. I'm here with John Dickinson, the Project Technical Lead for SWIFT. John, thanks for joining us, and tell us a little bit about yourself. Good morning. It's nice to be here. Thank you for hosting this. Um, as you said, I'm the Project Technical Lead for SWIFT. I've been part of OpenStack since it, since it very first uh, started. I was uh, on the original development team for SWIFT. Um, and so I think that gives me about uh, six years of experience inside of an OpenStack project. And for the past about three and a half years, I've been working uh, here in San Francisco at SwiftStack. Tell us, what were the hot topics that your team discussed in Tokyo, and what were the decisions and outcomes from those discussions? We had a great uh, design session in, uh, in Tokyo. We had a great week where we get together. I always enjoy the the summit weeks and any kind of other in-person meetings we have with the global community. Um, it really is a place where we can get this really super high bandwidth communication, figure out what's going on, what are the pain points uh, that people are uh, talking about, get a status update and more design decisions as far as things that are ongoing. Um, so as far as some of the big stuff we have going on, uh, one of the uh, most popular topics that is uh, not a new topic, but something that's been in, in progress for probably a little over six months now, most of this calendar year, is encryption. And so we're trying to implement a way that operators can uh, encrypt all of the data that is stored in the cluster so that uh, it meets certain requirements for certain deployments, especially those where they're storing uh, personally identifiable information, financial records, uh, things like that, basic places where people are really starting to embrace and adopt SWIFT, and uh, some, some of these new use cases uh, have additional requirements. And so in order to lower the barriers for adoption, that's one of the things we're currently working on. Uh, we also spent a lot of time on uh, following up with erasure codes. Uh, as you know, we've uh, something that we've uh, been working on for a while. We were released that originally back in the spring, and now uh, throughout the past six months we've been uh, testing and deploying and uh, really evaluating and, and polishing that feature. And we've made some great progress. We've got some great results. And so we were kind of sketching out, okay, where are we now and what do we have left to do on that? Um, we had a great feedback session from operators. And one of the things I like to do inside of the SWIFT uh, Design Summit tracks is have a, an explicit session set aside for operator feedback. Uh, in addition to the other kind of feedback things you can get with the operator's uh, track. And we got a couple of interesting requests this time, uh, specifically around utilization and kind of what the hardware resources are doing uh, uh, around what, uh, how, how specifically disks are being used and some more information uh, exposed to operators um, on that, along those lines, and also some better ways to uh, facilitate the different ways people have implemented uh, utilization tracking inside of SWIFT. And I think that uh, one of the other big things we, we talked about is uh, how to uh, work inside of the, or improve the SWIFT client, uh, the, both the SDK and the CLI uh, tools so that uh, applications can better use uh, and consume SWIFT, which is perfect for storing application data when you're dealing with uh, applications that are being deployed at very large scale, uh, storing a lot of data, web and mobile apps and, and things like that. And so we want to make sure that we can encourage uh, the applications there. And so we've got uh, some work that we are uh, evaluating, starting, designing uh, to improve the Swift client, uh, the documentation around that, the auth integration around that, um, and working more closely with uh, with Keystone for people who are using lots of different open site projects and improving docs for people who are only using Swift. So during the talk of planning, what did you identify as the user needs or problems that you're trying to solve? One of the, one of my favorite things about the Swift community is that nearly every single person who's contributing code to the project is also responsible for maintaining production clusters. And as such, when we're developing new features, when we're figuring out what are the new use cases that we need to start to support and the barriers to adoption uh, that we need to remove uh, for existing use cases, the specific user needs are intrinsically tied to the things that we're working on. We're not going to go out and spend a huge amount of effort on encryption or erasure codes or something like that without there actually being people out there ready to consume it today, but simply not being able to because it's not 
yet ready or not yet available. And so um, I would say that what are the specific user needs that were identified? It, it really just comes down to the same things I was talking about earlier. Uh, what are the big things we're working on? Because each of those are tied to specific use cases and specific requests from both end users and the deployers and operators who are responsible for maintaining things in production. What features, uh, maybe three or four new features or enhancements, uh, should we be looking forward to in the Metaka release? So I think the biggest thing that we're spending time on that is um, probably net new is encryption and being able to support that. Uh, one thing I've always been very careful about is to not uh, give specific dates as far as this is going to be done at this particular date because one of the joys of open source development is that you actually can't really control that uh, as people come and go and have different employers uh, moving people around to, do, to work on different things. Uh, but encryption is something that we're spending a lot of time on. Uh, one of the other things we're spending quite a bit of time on in, in various ways is improving um, uh, improving the overall experience for end users and uh, and operators, specifically around uh, lowering latency and smoothing out latency uh, when clusters are under load and giving the operators the tools they need to have the right insight into that and to uh, more efficiently manage their clusters. Great. Thank you. And then one last question for you. Um, the product work group has a number of themes uh, that help kind of connect the dots between various projects. Um, those themes include scalability, resiliency, manageability, modularity, and interoperability. And I wanted to know um, which of these themes do you feel that um, SWIFT is, is contributing the most to, is really focused on? Our number one priority is all of those. <laughs> Uh, obviously, that can't be the case for anybody, but uh, I will I will proudly stand behind the work that the community has done over the past six years, in uh, specifically around scalability and performance, and being able to uh, have a system that scales to massive levels and is uh, usable by people of all different uh, deployment patterns. But that being said, we are continually working on improving that uh, wherever we can, so that uh, specifically, as I mentioned earlier. Um, dealing with internal cluster uh, data tra uh, transport, for example, is that when there's when there's failures that we're automatically working around, uh, and we need to move data around inside of the cluster, or there's capacity adjustments or things like that, uh, we want to make sure that we're doing that in the most efficient way possible, as quickly as possible, uh, because that uh, makes operators happy and ultimately gives a better user experience for the end user. Uh, some of the other things that we're currently working on uh, are interop better interoperability with Keystone. Um, we, of course, have been supporting Keystone forever, uh, but uh, one of the things we're looking at adding on right now, and there's a lot of interest around and some, and some development work already, is adding in Keystone policy support so that uh, they can have more of that role-based access control uh, that's already supported in some other projects. So uh, we're, we're working on uh, that sort of thing, and um, yeah, so that, I think that's sort of kind of how we apply for those things. Well, John, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. We're looking forward to seeing Swift in the soccer release. Thank you very much. <laughs>